So thank you for coming this afternoon. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit how a story of units, which we use in kindergarten through fifth grade, relates all the way to a story of functions, which we use here for our eighth grade algebra students, but is really a ninth grade curriculum. So a story of functions is, is high school. So we're going to begin today by multiplying 15 times 13, and I'm going to use a rectangular array for that. I'm going to go ahead and draw mine up here like this. And I'm going to break the numbers like this. So if you could go ahead and talk to your shoulder partner about way I may have, why I may have set my array up that way. Well, you just put that times in the ones, right? right. Obviously. And then... Looks like you've got some bigger boxes and some smaller boxes. Right. Right. Larger values. Right. Larger value numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talked about how these are for the larger value numbers and down here we have the smaller numbers and we've, break it, we've broken our numbers up. So... That, that's all good. So in a story of units, we use uh, area models in order to, with um, multi-digit numbers, in order to teach the multiplication algorithms fluently. And um, this also helps work with the distributive property because students see, once they do their partial products, that we can add them up different ways. So go ahead and, and get your partial products for your area model. All right, and if you could come up and submit for us. Okay, so it, when you're teaching the, the array with the story units, how do you have kids add those numbers up you are normally? So if we're just, for the first time we're learning it, we would just stack them all up and make sure that they're in the correct place value. So they just 100, 50, 30, 15, and add them up? Right, if we were doing the standard algorithm, we would manipulate it a different way, but to begin with, this would be a... Mm -hmm. Okay, so check me, you, you all received 195 then, right? Correct. We all agree? Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So the work with these concrete numbers in a story of units helps prepare kids for the more abstract and the more challenging tasks that they then have to do later on in the story of functions, such as multiplying polynomials. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do that, but we're not gonna do it in what we call a rectangular array. We're gonna do it in something we call the tabular method. Now we call it the tabular method in the older, with the older groups because we'll have negative numbers and you really can't associate the lengths with negative numbers, is that? sort of falls apart, so we call it the tabular method. So go ahead and try, if you look at uh, B here, we're gonna try to multiply x plus five times x plus three, and let's try to do it in, in a rectangular array that we now call a tabular method. So go ahead and try to set that up. Okay, so what does it look like? Oh, going out of the limb here. Okay, so I'm guessing we've set it up with our x and five on the top. Okay. And then the x, x plus 3 on the, on the other side, on the side. All right, great. So it breaks, you break it apart just like we broke apart in the story of units, we broke apart the numbers. So go ahead and find your partial products. Okay, so then the x and x will be the x squared. And then we've got a 5x, 3x, and a 15. Okay, so we've got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so what am I what am I putting where? The top left we have x squared. Okay. And then to the right of it, um, 5x. And then on the bottom left we have x or 3x. All right. And then 15. And 15. All right, great. All right, so let's take a look at what these would be on a diagonal. Mm. What if we what if we added them up diagonally? So go ahead and talk to a shoulder partner about that. Okay, so then you've got the x squared, and then you're putting the 5x and the 3x together. Okay. So you're putting the like terms together. So x squared plus 15 minus 5x plus 3x. 3x, right. So then we got x squared plus 8x plus 15. All right, so what, what do we find along the diagonals? What do we have? <coughs> we've got the x squared. And then we put the like terms together, 3x and 5x. 
you have a uh, eight X. Eight X. And then the fifteen. Fifteen. All right. So we've used a similar method for a story of units and for a story of functions. So what sort of coherence do you see between the two? What 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 are, what are we seeing? How how is how is how are we moving in a coherent way from a story of units to a story of functions? Okay, well, and we've got the plus five and plus three, and then I guess if you substitute the ten in there for the x, you've got you've got the same oh, numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So you're, you're saying that if if I put ten in for x and calculate this, I'd have a hundred, and I have fifty, and I have thirty, and I have fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to say there that if you see that, first year algebra students need to see that. Um, first year algebra students have a really hard time from going. To, from concrete to abstract. This, this whole idea, some of them kind of get lost in the fact that everything they're doing is just letters and they lose the connection to the actual math. And so if you can make this tie-in, I would, I would share that with students. Is there anything else we see? Any other coherence between the two? Well, with the 30 and the 50, if you're putting those, you know, it's easier to add the 30 and the 50 together oh. right there. Okay. So, so then, so then you still got that diagonal thing going. So, oh, so, so it could still like a commutative or a distributive property. Does it matter which way? Well, if you think about this, and, and this really isn't part of my coherence talk, but I, I think it's worth talking about, is is this is singular units. These are units to the power of x, and these are x squared. It's almost place value for algebra. Okay. And if you look at the story of units, these are our ones, these are our tens, and these are our hundreds. So it's they both have place value, and they both have uses on diagonals with place value. Okay. So, see that? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in part C, we're actually going to try to use the reverse tabular method to factor x squared plus 2x minus 15. So think about and, and talk to a partner and talk at your tables how you might set up a tabular method to go backwards, really, to factor. Mm -hmm. right, so we're still doing it. Four squared, four squares. Okay. So I've got x squared, so I'm going to have an x there and an x there. Okay. So I'm hearing you're still setting up the four squares. Right. And um, I'm still have got that five and that three, so get down to 15. Oh. <laughs> okay. But then I have to get. But because it's minus 15, one of those numbers has to be negative. Well, let's let's just get it set up before we try to get the partial product. Okay. What would I, here I drew arrows, diagonals this way. If I'm going to go the other way, which is really what's happening when I factor, factor being the opposite of, of doing the distributive, I'm going to take my table this way. If I write my x squared here, and I write my 2x here, and my negative 15 here, I now want to try to push it back into the table. Okay. So talk together and see if you can come up with some partial products. Okay, well, we've got the, the uh, to get the x squared, we know we have to have an x and an x. Okay, so, so this, this just pushes to x squared, and so you know that's x and x, I'm hearing right, that. Right, okay, and I'm not sure how to get to it. Well, anyway, but uh, I know I'm gonna have three and five, is there another one of these that I can fill in? Well, I, I can fill. Oh, so it would have to I be can, a negative. So I can push that there to negative 15, right? Right. right. So, so now I have to look for combinations of 15 okay. that so I could use here and here. So what are the, the, I've got only two choices here. Yeah, so I can do three and five or one and mm -hmm. 15, right? Right. So yeah, let's do th so three and five. So if I use three and five, Right. And one of them's going to have to be negative, right. so that means I'm going to have one plus and one minus. Right. Because it's a positive two x, what does that tell us? Which one's going to be the plus? The five. The five. Yeah. Yeah. X plus five, x minus three. We're going to get three x, five x, and we factored it. Yay. Thank you. All right.